in this video we're going to be talking about auxins auxins um we have done an introductory video on uh, plant hormones phytohormones and if you haven't seen that yet you can go to the playlist or check our video list and you'll see introductory to phytohormones that will do a lot of good because we are moving forward on these and today we are talking about auxins we didn't mention that auxin is one of the plant hormones in fact the principal plant hormone and it plays a lot of roles in um, in the life of plants so today we are going to talk about auxins we have these major uh, functions of auxins in plants over here the first one is the stimulation of cell elongation cell division in cambion and a lot more pertaining to phloem and xylem, differentiation, root initiation, stem cutting, and a lot more. It also helps in what we call delaying leaf senescence. Delaying leaf senescence. Um, when we talk about senescence, that is something that is pertaining to um, showing aging or showing old age, a sign of old age, or something that will make the plants look fresh. Yeah. So that is one of the functions of auxins and um, also inhibition or promotion of fruit and leaf abscission, that is the falling of leaf. Of course, if it helps to, de to delay the senescence, then it's, it is actually helping to inhibit sort of leaf abscission, falling off of leaf and uh, sometimes fruits. Alright, so it also suppresses um, lateral bad growth. Yeah, this over here. This over is the chemical structure of auxins. We see it's an acid derivative as well as most of the plant hormones that we'll be talking about in other videos. Auxin is also referred to as indole-3 indole acetic acid. Of course, just like I said that they are acid derivatives and so this is another name for auxin and it's also written in short I A A. So that is Indo 3 acetic acid. So for the rest of this video we're going to be talking about the the role of auxin in stem and root elongation. So stem and root elongation. Now, the study of these properties um, actually lead to some observations or some facts, and uh, I prefer to call them observations. So, we are going to look at these observations and their contribution to our studies. So, what we are going to talk about today, the first observation that we can talk about is the fact that um, the growth of plant is affected by several factors and the most important of these factors includes uh, moisture so we can talk about moisture of course every plant needs water and we can also talk about pH we can talk about temperature and then we can talk about light we can also talk about plant hormones as we are doing now. In the previous video we did mention that auxins are principal hormones and they are produced at the apices of the stem and the roots and uh, we call those parts the meristem and so the cells over there we call it merismatic cells. Merismatic cells. Now our second observation is all factors about the coleoptile experiments. Coleoptile experiments. If you're wondering what coleoptile is then you have it right here. It is the pointed protective sheet covering the primary leaf of germinating monocotyledon seeds of grasses or maize. So to have a cotyledon seed germinating it has these pointed tips and that tip is being covered by what we call the coleoptile 
that could look that. So what actually takes place in this experiment? Now, these experiments have shown that when the the shoot coleoptal of Macy during its removal or cut off, the coleoptal stops growing. In other words, stop increasing in length. Now, when the tip is replaced, the growth continues. It increases in length. So that is actually the second observation that we're going to talk about today. So you have something like um, a seedling here. Before it even germinates to this place, you have these leaves covering the tip. It covers the tip and it, it acts as what you call coleoptal. This coleoptal that we're talking about. Now, when that coleoptal was cut off, the growth ceased until it is being replaced. So that is what you call a coleoptal experiment. Now, the third observation is telling us that the growth in stem is promoted by high oxygen concentration while that of the root is by low oxygen concentration. Now, how does that work? How does it work? Now, what this is saying is that assuming we have this stem or this stem growing up, what it's saying is that if we have oxygen to be highly concentrated here, then the stem is going to grow faster. In other words, it's going to elongate. Now, what this oxygen does is when you have these cells being arranged is going to elongate the cell, cause it to increase in length, and that will in turn cause the stem to grow faster. But what is seen right here is the opposite for the roots. It's saying that if we have oxen, if we have a lot of oxen in the root, let's put, let's assume this are root. If we have a lot of oxens inside there, then the growth will not go fast, but if it is really low in the root, then the growth is going to be fast. So this is the effect of oxygen concentration in the stem and the roots. And we're going to look at that um, more illustratively when we look at other facts. So this actually leads us to our fourth observation. So our fourth observation will tell us that the growth of the root system is inhibited by high oxygen concentration and the, that of the stem is being inhibited by low oxygen concentration. So that's uh, these factors which we look at the first observation. Do they have anything that affects this concentration of oxygen? All right, so we're going to look at them in some few minutes. So if this is our stem and this is our root, for growth to increase, we, if we have growth to increase, it means we have a high concentration, high cong of oxen. But what will be the effect of high concentration of oxen on the root? This, let's say, increase. Growth, but we have high concentration of oxen. That we can say that the root will have a low growth or decrease in growth. Decrease in growth. All right, so this this is the effect of the concentration of oxen. Let's go ahead and look at the fifth fact. So now you might be wondering, then, um, how do we get low concentration of oxen in the roots to enable the roots to grow? It is very simple. What actually happened is that you have this oxen. There is a fifth observation, or let's call it fact five. You said you have this this oxen being produced at the tips of the, of the shoot or the stem and then it gradually gets transported to the roots. It gets transported to the root. So if you look at this diagram right here, it looks like you have the auxins being produced at the shoot apex over here and then you get it going down towards the root. So how will it affect that? It means that the more it goes down, the more it decreases in concentration. So at the tip here, we will surely have 
we should have high concentration high concentration at the shoot and then at the root we'll have low concentration low we'll have low concentration at the roots all right with this balance we can be sure that we have growth taking place both the shoot and at the roots okay so let's look at observation six of fact six is saying that Light water and concentration of starch in the apices affect the distribution of oxygen at the root and the shoot. Light water concentration, they affect the distribution of oxygen at the shoot and the root. How does that happen? Now, it says that high intensity of light reduces oxygen concentration at the shoot. And then when we have low intensity, it increases oxygen concentration at the root. So let's look at how this will affect our plant growth. Now, this simply means that when we have our oxygens being produced at the tip of the plant, at the shoot, it's saying that the more we have light coming from one direction, so let's call this um okay let's call this unilateral light so this will be unilateral light what it means is coming from one direction so when we have this light coming from one direction what is going to happen is that because when light shines at one side of the plant is going to decrease the oxygen concentration here the oxygen will begin to move towards the parts with low light concentration in other words the dark parts so if you observe carefully you realize that this place is exposed to the light while this side is like it's quite dark so this side facing the light is going to cause the oxygen to start moving towards the dark parts of the plant. Once we have our oxygen concentrated at the dark part of the plant, we will have to visit our statement again. Now this statement is telling us that um, high oxygen concentration stimulates growth at the shoot. High oxygen concentration will stimulate growth at the shoot. So if we have more oxygen drifted to the dark side of the plant, then what it means is that if this is the plant, the cells at the dark region, remember this side is a dark region, the cells over here will begin to elongate. They begin to elongate while the ones at the light region, and so remember this is our light. So the light region will remain undifferentiated while the ones at this side begin to elongate so what is going to happen is we're going to have a stagnant growth at this side while this cells at the top while the cells at the top over here begin to elongate and the growth is going to go in the direction of the light because once the cells elongate over here once the cells over here elongate it's going to be shifting towards the light towards the source of the light while this one remains undifferentiated so growth is going to be stagnant here and that is going to cause the plants to grow towards the light so that is simply the reason why we have plants growing towards light you observe that a lot initially the plants will grow straight until it begins to encounter light from a unilateral source in other words the light is coming from one direction then you realize the plant begins to grow towards the source of the light towards the source of the light okay um, remember what we just talked about is is in relation to to the shoot system only and then uh, water has similar effects on the root 
it has similar effects on the root. Um, high water concentration causes an increase uh, in oxygen production in the root, and um, this means that anytime we have low concentration or oxygen distribution in the, in the dry parts of the root, it means that part is going to grow fast. But when we have um, when we have one part exposed to the water, that part is going to have high oxygen. And that automatically means that we're going to have low growth because the part which is not exposed to the water will have low oxygen concentration. It is going to increase in length towards the water because the other side will be, will be having stunted growth and then the, the, the dry side will grow, bending it towards the water. So these are the effects of oxygen in plants. And we'll be looking at more in the, our next tutorial. Remember that um, the response of the plants towards these stimulus, like light and water, is what we refer to as um, tropism. So when we are talking about it which responds to light, then that is going to be talking about phototropism. Phototropism. So in a case where we have these plants growing towards the source of light, then we we'll call it what positive phototropism. So in case it's moving away from the light, then that is going to be what negative phototropism. So in a similar case when we have the we we'll have the roots, we we'll have the roots growing towards gravity. Or we have what that towards the gravity we say that it has what a positive geotropism positive geotropism all right so if you like this video remember to subscribe and and like you can share the links to your friend and watch out for our next tutorial thank you